Good morning. It's good to be with you on this Monday morning as we continue in our time together in Malachi. As I told you last week, this will probably be the week. Um, yeah, we will probably. Yeah, I think we'll finish Malachi this the, the in this week, and then we'll um pick up with the New Testament in the following weeks. We may have a we may miss next week. Um, based off um. The fact I'm going to be out of town preaching a revival, so we may not have any next week. So it'll probably be around the first week of August when we pick up in the New Testament. But we'll talk more about that later in the week. Today we're going to read Malachi chapter 2, verses 10 through 17, where uh, the prophet writes these words. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Why then are we faithless to one another, profaning the covenant of our ancestors? Judah has been faithless, and an abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the sanctuary of the Lord, which he loves, and has married the daughter of a foreign god. May the Lord cut off from the tent of Jacob anyone who does this, and any witness or answer to bring an offering to the Lord of hosts. And this you do as well. You cover the Lord's altars with tears, with weeping and groaning, because he no longer regards the offering or accepts it with with favor at your hand. You ask, why does he not? Because the Lord has witnessed between you and the wife of your youth, to whom you have been faithless, though she is your companion and your wife by covenant. Did God not make her? Both flesh and spirit are this. And why does the why does the one God desire? And what does the one God desire? God the offspring. So look to yourselves, and do not let anyone be faithless to the wife of his youth. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel, and the, the God of Israel, and the covering of one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. So take heed to yourselves, and do not be, be faithless. You have wearied the Lord with your words. Yet you say, How have we wearied him? By saying, All who do evil are good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Or by asking, Where is the God of justice? So, um, this Malachi, remember I said earlier that um, some scholars think it is possible that Malachi was a pseudonym um, for Ezra. Um, this this passage here feels a lot like part of Ezra and Nehemiah. Because um, we see here this notion that the, the people of God have chosen to um, uh, forsake God and have chosen to um, become part with, uh, they, they have chosen not obedience to God here. They've chosen to be inter intermingled and intermarried with um, uh, the Canaanites and have taken on the worship of the Canaanite gods. And so so there, there's a lot of interesting things to unpack here because it's worth important to read scripture in, in, in whole. So remember, Moses had a had had a, had a foreign wife. There are many, I mean, um, um, Ruth was a Moabite. So, but these individuals married into the people of God and they worshiped God. What, what matters to God is that he is worshipped by his people. So what's happening here is the people of God are, are, are committing idolatry when they, when they marry and when they are drawn into pagan worship by these, these new families. And so God is saying, don't forsake me. Don't forsake me. Don't choose something other than me. Choose me first. And when you choose me, when, when you abide in me, when you stay rooted deeply in me, then that is where the redemptive power comes. Uh, this Verse 17 is always evocative to me. You have wearied the Lord with your words. Did you say, have we wearied him? Have we, how have we wearied him? By saying, all who do evil are good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Or by asking, where is the God of justice? I, 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 I think that's a powerful notion that we need to be careful of, that we don't just honor God with words and go through the rituals of religion, but that we keep our hearts steadfast on God. And I think that's the great critique of this, of the people of God here in this, um, in this post-exilic period. That, like, that's why it just reminds me, it really reminds me a lot of the words of Ezra and Nehemiah to the people of God when they began to rebuild the temple and rebuild Jerusalem after the exile is keep your heart, keep your heart steadfast and focused on me. Keep your heart steadfast and focused on me. 
it's so easy. It's so easy to allow so many things other than God to be what we focus on. It's so easy to take root in things of this world and things of our culture and things of, of our context instead of staying rooted deeply in the life of God. And the people had had not done that. And God is warning them of their past. Um, he, he, he has a uh, Judah has been faithless and an abomination that has been committed in Israel and Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the sanctuary of the Lord, which he loves, and married the daughter of a foreign God. In other words, instead of staying deeply rooted and deeply connected to me, you have chosen to wander off into foreign places, into dangerous places. Um, and that's a danger, y'all. I, I think part of what we need to always, you know, the Bible talks about as iron sharpens iron, so does one sharpen another. I, I think we just need to be very careful where we find our deepest relationships. Um, this world we live in. Golly, it's tempting, isn't it? There's a great song by an old Christian group, Cademan's Call, entitled This World. Where it says, this world has nothing for me, but this world has everything. You know, and if we don't keep our feet firmly rooted in God's word, if we don't keep our, our feet firmly rooted in Christian community, I, I think it's easy to get swayed by culture and peer pressure and expectations and everything that we struggled with with as teenagers. And frankly, y'all, if we're going to be honest, everything we struggle with now as adults. For the temptations don't change and the struggles don't change and the worries don't change, but it remains the same. And I think that's why, I think that's really what he's hitting at here is that they have chosen to marry and they've chosen to marry the Canaanites, and they have chosen to take on the Canaanite gods. And that decision has led them from God, has led them from God. And so be careful. Just be careful. There's an old, I said, oh, was it Benjamin Franklin? I, I feel like it's poor Richard Almanac that says this. I don't know if that's true. This feels very much like poor Richard Almanac. Uh, you sleep with dogs, you wake up with fleas. Um. I've heard it put like this when I was younger. It's a lot easier to be pulled, to, for someone to pull you down than for you to to pick them up. And this is not to say that we shouldn't have relationships and friendships with those who are not Christian. Because goodness, y'all, how are we going to witness the world if we don't have non-Christian friends? <laughs> you know, how are we, how are folks going to know we love them if we don't actually love them? How do folks know, how do folks know that we value them in relationship if we don't aren't actually in relationship with them. And so I think part of the problem is that we Christians don't spend time with any non-Christians. So we don't have non-Christians to talk about Jesus with, you know? We get caught in an echo chamber of only Christians and then we don't know people that that don't know Jesus. And we need to be able out branching out in relationships and being connected with folks that may be different than us or think different than us. And and we can we can teach them Jesus, but we can also learn how to talk to them and learn what matters to them and then learn how more effectively to love folks where they are. So this is not a, a call to only be connected within the church or only be connected within Christian circles. We need non-Christian circles and non-Christian friends. We do. I do. I, I have some and I value them. But always keep your heart Steadfastly rooted in God. Always keep your true home in Christian community. Always keep your closest relationships with the folks who pray for you and care for you and carry you and love you and are there for you. That's who we need. And that was the caution that Ezra gives the people here is not Ezra, uh, Malachi. <laughs> Malachi gives the people here is stay, stay deeply rooted and deeply centered in God above all else. 
above all else. They had not done that in the past, and they were they were trending towards not doing it in this time. And the prophet reminds them, let's not make that mistake again. Thanks for being with us. We're going to pick up tomorrow with um, Malachi chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 7 tomorrow. So uh, thanks for being with us, and we'll continue with Malachi. Have a great day.